Hello and welcome to today's webinar which looks at how you can make the Purple Mash Scheme of Work for Computing work for your school. Whether you're new to Purple Mash or you've been using it for a while, you may have found that you need to tweak the curriculum to help best suit your overall curriculum coverage. So today's webinar will go through ways in which you can tweak, adapt, modify the computing screen scheme within Purple Mash to help meet the needs of your school. To begin, it's worth noting that schools tend to use the Purple Mash computing scheme of work in two different ways. Some schools use it as their one and only computing resource, and other schools dip in and out of Purple Mash and supplement their own computing um, curriculum for their school. Whichever way that you use Purple Mash scheme of work for computing, Hopefully it will allow you to be flexible and to ensure that you've got the breadth of coverage and you'll be able to see progression year on year. Now, a good place to start with the scheme of work is the overview. Whether your school has single age classes or multiple age classes like mixed year groups, then we do have the scheme of work to accommodate both types. So you'll notice that the overview allows you to see all of our units by year group or for mixed age classes we do have a cycle A, cycle B option. When we had our updates to the computing scheme of work last summer we tried to encourage schools to look at the overview of the whole year in relation to the three strands of computing. We've colour coded these accordingly. Not only does the colour coding help identify which one of the three strands the each unit falls into, but it also allows schools who just use the Purple Mash computing scheme for one particular strand to identify which units they can access. For example, some schools just opt to use the Purple Mash scheme of work for the computer science units. So here it will allow each year group to be able to see which units that they can use to help accomplish that overview. It's important to bear in mind that just because we've numbered the units in this order doesn't mean that that's the order that they need to be delivered in. If you look at the individual year group overview and for multiple age classes as well, we try and encourage people to look at this kind of pick and mix style table where you can see all the units and it'll allow you to deliver the units in any order. The only unit that we specify to be done at a particular time is in year one, Unit 1.1 is the first unit to be delivered as that essentially launches Purple Mash to the children. It allows them to understand how to access to-dos, where to save their work, and it gives the grounding for them to then move on and interact with any of the further units within that year group. You'll also notice that we've got um, some additional units for um, desktop publishing. So for example, in year three, we've got presenting using Microsoft PowerPoint or Google Slides. In year five, we have word processing using Microsoft Word or Google Docs. And also we have unit 6.9 in year six, which is spreadsheets using Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. So these units really allow children to interact with the resources and software that are external to Purple Mash and will help them transition well, not only into Key Stage 3, but also when they're using technology at home or elsewhere using either Google or Microsoft technology. That leads me quite nicely on to um, explaining about the appearance of two spreadsheets units in year six. It's not a case of needing to deliver two units, it's a case of either or. In fact, we do recommend that schools use the unit 6.9 because this will just enable the children to transition that little bit more um, confidently to key stage three when they move on to their secondary school. So it's always worth noting which um, software device for spreadsheets your feeder secondary school uses. So if you find out they're in Excel with Microsoft or Google Sheets, then you can find all of the relevant plans and resources within Purple Mash to help deliver that unit uh, via the same to-do system that they're familiar with, but then they will be interacting with the resource that they will then go on to use in subsequent years. Returning back to the main computing scheme of work area now, you'll notice that whichever year group that you're teaching from years one to six, when you open that folder, 
you have the disclaimer that the units can be taught in any order to meet the needs of your wider curriculum. We try and do this to encourage any cross-curricular links that you can make use of and also we appreciate that not all units will be able to be delivered during the year. So with that in mind, it's worth noting that each individual year group has its own overview folder within which you can find a trimmed down version of the overview specific to your year group. This does give you a, a bit of a refresher as to your overview units per year and then within that for each unit you'll then receive a unit overview which covers the key learning in each of the lessons in each of the units. But if you scroll down towards the bottom of that document what you'll find is a link to either the national curriculum the Welsh curriculum and we'll also see further down below we have Northern Ireland and Scottish curriculum and it gives you the coverage per unit. So for example if I just look at the national curriculum objectives at the moment you'll notice that the national curriculum objectives are key stage based. So because I've opened the year four unit this is showing me all the year four units and how they link to the national curriculum objectives. You'll see that there's only seven objectives for, the, for both Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2. It will demonstrate which strand that objective falls into, and it allows you to see which Purple Mash units help deliver these national curriculum objectives. As you'll see, there's a fair bit of repetition, especially this information technology objective. It's covered in Year 4 in five different units. So it's issues like this when we see repetition that when schools approach us and say I'm struggling to actually get everything delivered in one year are there any units that I might be able to you know, eliminate but not affect the breadth of coverage so it's this position where we find ourselves in looking at the overview this information technology um, objective is delivered in four units however if I was to remove 4.1 that would have a negative impact in all three of the top computer science objectives so I can't tweak around with 4.1. If I were to look at 4.4, 4.6 or other units that find themselves um, only being covered in this particular objective that's got multiple repetition, then you'll notice 4.6 is the animation unit. 4.4, uh, for example, is the writing for different audiences. So you've got some wiggle room whereby you can determine which units you could eliminate if you need to but still have that overall coverage. If I were to look at 4.4, 4.6 or other units that find themselves um, only being covered in this particular objective that's got multiple repetition then you'll notice 4.6 is the animation unit, uh, 4.4 for example is the writing for different audiences so you've got some wiggle room whereby you can determine which units you could eliminate if you need to but still have that overall coverage similarly you'll also find the overlap for different purple mash units and the national curriculum objectives within the purple mash spread spreadsheet assessment tool if you use it at your school so for example for this information technology objective it's being delivered in all of these five units if you only deliver three units that year the children will still have that coverage and you'll still have the evidence that you could then mark against children's progress so it's not only in the scheme of work overview that you'll find the overlap you'll also find it in the assessment area as well it's very common for schools to need to tweak the scheme of work to help fit in with your overall timings and coverage and expectations that you have for computing at your school. With that in mind, my colleague Lucy has made a really good, useful resource that hopefully will provide you with some ideas or guidance as to where each unit fits in relation to the strands of the computing curriculum, the progression that children make, and any cross-curricular links that you can try and establish to try and merge the time and free up some valuable time in your curriculum. So she's created this Word document which as you can see breaks down into computer science, IT and digital literacy 
and covers the year units for each year group. The coverage as to what children will be mainly learning in that year. But what I find particularly useful is cross curricular links. So suggested activities or topics that you might try and incorporate the computing lessons as part of to try and kill two birds with one stone. So for example, this computer science um, part of the curriculum could be taught alongside recipes and instructional language for English or construction. This information technology section all about data handling could be taught along mini beasts grouping according to you know size or um, wings or legs and so on. It's really useful resource to give you an idea as to how the children build on prior learning and also that key tip of how you could try and get children to be learning computing as part of their topics, their science, English, maths and so on. This resource has been shared within our um, teachers section. When you click on the teachers icon on the top of the home screen, the first icon is resource sharing. And once I click on that, I can then search for computing progression. And you'll find that we've got this computing progression and curriculum links document that you can have a look through at your own leisure or share with any colleagues who you might find it useful. We also have, within the scheme of work itself, opening up that overview again, back to the beginning, we have a little disclaimer as to how you can adapt and refine the scheme for your school. As it says, in an ideal world, we'll be able to complete all units. However, that isn't always appropriate or realistic. So, as it mentions here, try and find links to the mass curriculum. In years one, two, three, five and six, we've got lots of units that can help accomplish maths skills and objectives. The English lessons and data handling is part of maths as well. So lots of ways within the actual scheme of work that you can find. And again, that's within the main overview. There are also some schools that find it useful to be able to thematically deliver part of the computing curriculum across the school all in one go. Again, with that in mind, my lovely colleague Danica has come up with a really useful, nice overview as to how you can deliver half-termly computing focuses with your school. So, for example, some schools want to focus on one particular element of the computing curriculum and every year group deliver it per half term. So this is an example as to how you could deliver coding in one term from years one to six. You could have a half term on art and design from years one to six. Half a term on digitally writing and creating texts. A half term on data handling and spreadsheets. A half term on online and communicating. And then a remainder half term of various different resources such as quizzes, games, using computers for real life scenarios. And again, these have been added to our resource sharing area. If you click on resource sharing and within here put computing and I'm just going to put half termally, then you'll be able to see you have access to that same resource that you might want to look at at your leisure or share with any colleagues who might find it useful. Hopefully that's given you some ideas as to how you might want to tweak the Purple Mash curriculum for computing to best suit the needs of your school. The key thing to remember is that as long as you've got that coverage, you might be dipping into Purple Mash for the occasional thing or using it as your only resource. But just know that you have that freedom and flexibility to move things around to make best use of the resources. Obviously, if you can make um, best use of any cross curricular links that might help free up some time, that's great. The key thing is that you can use as much of as little it as you want to build your own scheme of work that's relevant to the needs and levels and expectations of your school and its learners. We hope you found today's webinar useful. Thanks ever so much for watching. By all means, we'd love to hear your feedback. If there's anything you'd like to see more of or that you want to find out about, by all means, you can contact us uh, via our social media channels. We're on Twitter at Two Simple Software, or if you're into Facebook, we are the group Purple Mash. And by all means, please do say hi and let us know what you think. All the best with using it in your school. 
Thanks for stopping by and happy purple mashing.